Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot made history four years ago, becoming the city's first black, female, and openly gay mayor. And now her time as the city's leader is coming to an end. Today, Lightfoot will give her farewell address. Her official last day in office is May 15th, and then she'll hand over the reins to fellow Democrat Brandon Johnson. But before all that, she joins us now right here on Morning Joe. It is great to have you back on the show. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about guns, and Chicago has its own set of issues. Um, but first, let's just talk about your time in office. Um, you came into office with an extremely ambitious agenda. Um, you broke out of a pack of 14. Um, you won all 50 wards. And then in the re-election, it didn't go that well. It, 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 I, don't, I believe it didn't even make the runoff. But if you could tell us what you think you learned from this experience and what, what about Chicago politics that perhaps could be useful for the next mayor in serving the city? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on uh, today. It's always been a pleasure uh, to be with you and the others. Look, I think we live in a really difficult time, and I'm one of the first uh, big city mayors that ran for re-election um, coming out of COVID. Many of my peers across mm -hmm. the country um, opted not to run. And I think what we know is what we, you've been talking about in your program. We are a very divided country, and unfortunately, we're a divided city, even though we're deep blue, a democratic city. The winds that we see that are blowing nationally are certainly affecting us um, every single day. And I don't think we can underestimate where we are as a country mm -hmm. coming out of this pandemic where the lives of literally every resident were upended. And I said this many times uh, going into the reelection. Um, my biggest concern wasn't the name of a particular person in the ballot. It was breaking through the frustration, the fear, people are feeling in my city and I know are feeling across the country. Um, we came up short, but I leave office with my head held high. What we, I think, taught our city and what we taught the country is how to operationalize equity, whether it's the historic investments in uh, affordable housing, the environment, our youth, um, coming up with a public safety strategy that wasn't just dependent upon law enforcement first and only. We have a lot of things that we have done, seeds that we have planted, that I'm confident will continue to transform our city for years to come. Mayor Lightfoot, Reverend Shopton, uh, uh, I have to note that you spent maybe two days at our National Action Network convention, and every time you walked in the room, you got a standing ovation. Is it that you get a sense that people understand that uh, you and other uh, mayors of color, black mayors, uh, came up against some insurmountable odds. As you said, the pandemic, crime, we're dealing uh, in New York right now with a subway vigilante, and that these forces that you have uh, to deal with uh, really tried to target in many ways cities that had black mayors, like Texas sending migrants to your city and to New York City. I, I, I think that people don't have a sense that you governed at a time that they tried to line the stars against uh, mayors of big cities uh, that particularly of color, particularly Democrat, to try to put their thumb on a scale that was already down uh, in terms of the pandemic and all that you had to deal with. Look, there's no question, Reverend Al, that there are some people uh, in Chicago and across the country that don't want mayors like me to succeed. There's a reason why in 2020, part of Trump's national strategy was to go after um, cities and mayors like me by name, by city, um, not just me, um, but also uh, Keisha uh, Lance Bottoms in Atlanta, Muriel Bowser. Um, in mm -hmm. uh, Washington, D.C., and when you, the person with the biggest megaphone and biggest stage attacks you in a way that Trump attacked us, it unleashes a set of forces uh, mm -hmm. that are hard to control. Those dog whistles that were blown in 2020 are still resonating uh, today, and it was fed by the uncertainty and the anger and then funded by right-wing forces uh, that wanted to take down a big city mayor. Unfortunately, the people who were jumping on the bandwagon of a Republican posing like a Democrat now got a Democratic Socialist as their mayor. So careful what you wish for. 
Mayor Lightfoot, good hmm. morning. We've been talking about Texas Governor Greg Abbott quite a bit today for a variety of different reasons. Uh, and you and some of your fellow big city mayors have been sharply critical of his moves of late to bus migrants uh, to your cities, in this case, of course, Chicago. Um, and you've been saying there's been thousands of migrants and you don't have the ability to properly care and house them. So talk to us, tell us a little bit about what you want from him, but also what more do you need from the federal government while this continues? Look, what Greg Abbott is doing, a man who professes to be a Christian, is absolutely, utterly inhumane. Putting people on buses, treating them like afraid to make a political stunt. And it's no coincidence that he decided to do this at a time when Biden had announced his plans for re-election. His ambitions to be the Republican nominee are fading and he's becoming irrelevant. The fact that he is now doing this again um, is a political consequence, not a public um, health or a public safety uh, consequence. And what he's doing is treating these migrants in the most inhumane way. We've seen people coming to our city who are in dire uh, medical um, conditions. We've seen people coming that are suffering from all kinds of trauma from their home countries, but also the journey uh, that they took to get to the United States. So we can't solve this problem on a city by city, a state by state basis. And I'm incredibly sympathetic to cities along the border that are really getting crushed and have been for quite some time. But we definitely need the federal government to step up. Um, we need work permits for these people that are here in our country legally. I could put every able-bodied adult uh, to work today if they were allowed to work um, in our cities legally. And I know other mayors across the country feel exactly the same way. We need more resources uh, to come to cities like Chicago, like New York, like Washington, D.C., Denver, Albuquerque, and Phoenix, all of us who are suffering on the border where they're using those resources to just ship migrants to our cities. So we need a federal solution to this national problem. Uh, Mayor Lightfoot, um, just on guns, uh, like many other cities across the nation, Chicago is facing its own challenges. What is your advice to the next uh, mayor about how to tackle Chicago's handgun crisis? Well, again, the, the mayor, I'm confident, will continue to do the things that we know uh, work. But the problem is... The guns are pouring over the border from uh, states that mm -hmm. have a very different sensibility about gun and, and, and violent crime. And look, just this weekend, we lost um, a young police officer who was killed by what I'm sure is illegal handguns in the hands mm -hmm. of criminals. You asked your previous speaker what were the things that should be done at the national level, and I would say two things. Obviously, common sense gun control, but most importantly, most importantly, is strip the immunity that the gun manufacturers have. If individuals and families and communities were able to sue the gun manufacturers for the havoc that they are wreaking and the blood money uh, that they are uh, reaping profits from, we would see a dramatic change. We wouldn't see them making more serious, uh, violent guns. We wouldn't see them having record sales because Every single time in the history of our country where we've seen a product that is unsafe, whether it's baby cribs, whether it's uh, cars, right. whether it's um, other kinds of consumer products, we take those products off the market. We should be doing the same thing with these weapons of war that have no business being in the hands of civilians. Mayor Lori Lightfoot, thank you very much uh, for coming on this morning, and thank you for, uh, for your service, and uh, we'll see you soon. And coming you. up on morning.